What is going on guys? Welcome to First Person Garage. Um, I've already posted a couple videos so you guys already seen it, but I figured I'd just make a video kind of of an overview of uh, my whole garage. Some of the stuff is like these couches are getting thrown out and these boxes are getting broken down so they're normally not here. It's normally not this cluttered, but figured I'd show you all some of the tools I'm using, some of the upcoming projects um, from videos. Um, yeah, basically how I do it um, and what my garage is like. So I guess I'll start off on this side of the, the room, work our way around. Um, here we got my bride seat. Um, I've had this thing for a while. It mainly just sits in the garage. Eventually I'm gonna put it in the, the 240 when I got the time to get the rails and the money and <clears throat> all that other stuff. So for now, it's just a cool little piece that sits here. Same with Felix the Rotor Man, still chilling here back in my my rotary days. Still pretty cool, I keep him around. Um, onto this side, we got the Z Creeper. Uh, it's a pretty awesome thing, especially when you detailing, you get to sit down for a minute at a nice even level and do what you're doing or you can lay it down so the Z Creeper stand is definitely an awesome awesome tool to get uh, makes life a lot easier you're gonna notice a lot of these boxes hanging around um, they're all <laughs> RB parts literally got everything from the swap uh, like I mentioned from my friend from Japan and he was gracious enough to sell me everything for a pretty good price but literally everything's in the boxes from the harnesses um, miscellaneous accessory parts um, not in the boxes but over there I got the diff the tranny um, the drive shaft um, but yeah literally all these boxes you're gonna see are RB25 parts and you'll see some hanging around there and uh, like the dust cover for the trans and all that other stuff like that um, Here's uh, the dissecting little table, or I usually will do, clean up little parts, um, fix little things, um, so any little in-depth video of little things like that, like the fuel pump we were doing earlier will be here. Um, I got this newer style um, AC con uh, little button unit that I'm going to swap in later, so... Also, I keep little parts here. Same with the D Max uh, D1 spec inner tie rods, the strength inner reinforced versions. I'm gonna get most of my my subframe to be D Max. I want and I want some BC coils and I don't know. We'll see. But for the most part, I I kind of want to stick to a theme of putting mainly um, Japanese type parts, especially because I can get the hookup and everything like that. So that's mainly what we're gonna stick with and gonna do so you'll see these later on in a reveal uh, when I get the rest of the suspension going I just mainly want to keep it stock for now drive it enjoy what it's like now and then throw everything on in a huge upgrade and then see what the car is like after that so yep there's that this is a jack uh, one of my other ones that I use I have two uh, spare gas tank in case I need that Brake cleaner, you can't have enough. <laughs> can't have enough of it, so I got a lot of brake cleaner um, and some electric sparks cleaner. Moving to this side, we got the wall of motivation. Um, we got my toolbox. Got the list. Um, oil change stuff. So we'll start over here. I use this one mainly just to change out oil. This one I use clean it out frequently in case I need to put fluids back or whatever. Um, yeah, you can see the RB25 sandwich plate. I got it just sitting in here. Just getting whatever little bit out. And also, I'm ready to throw it back on. So, yeah. You got that. Um, jack stands. They're not the best, but they work. <laughs> I got jack stands. We got wheel chocks. Uh, the good old giant Harbor Freight uh, jack. Um, most of the time, I'll get parts. Or not parts. I'll get tools from Harbor Freight or then I'll go and I'll, I'll always upgrade and step up and either get Snap-on or Craftsman. So yeah, most of the time I'm just starting off 
building my tool so i'll get like i'll start off with hardware and then i'll work my way up and eventually you know they don't last too long so when they go then i upgrade and get the good one um and it's mainly because when projects occur then i i need the the tools for them so yeah and then i got a big old shop broom it's pretty awesome to have i, I like to keep my area cleanish clean <laughs> And you got the wall of motivation, and I'm always throwing pictures up here and stuff like that. You'll notice a lot of them are S chassis, Skyline, uh, Zs. Uh, there's some Arc 7s, some Corollas, some A86s. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep filling it up, but it's cool to have. And then there's other little cool pieces like Sign Nate Hamilton poster. Um, I got this old famous thing. <laughs> Used to be my old 90s Momo wheel a buddy gave me back in the day. And, um, yeah, and started going out and I didn't want it to get ruined. So then I was like, well, why not hang it up and turn it into a piece? And now I take it, like, to FD events and stuff like that and get signed by a lot of my favorite drivers and, um, big YouTube, big YouTube stars and, um, you know, just good people from the car community and stuff and the car culture. Just So hopefully I'm going to get all, even all this all caked and it, it'll just be a cool piece to have. Have all kinds of people on there. Um, if you go on my Instagram at Project Still Daily, you'll see I'll, I'll, I'll keep tagging them. And then um, there's a whole list of everybody that's on there. Um, got Texas. Love Texas. That's where I'm from. So I'll stay loyal to. It's my country. <laughs> it's my country. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, other little cool stuff. Uh, we got the, you know, little vintage rod poster. My old ARC 7 plates with the awesome Lucky 7 um, license plate cover and stuff. And then Masashi Okoi signed uh, stickers of his car. I had that framed up a little bit <laughs> to keep it nice as one of my favorite drivers um and then right here we got the list of things <laughs> to do um originally people were just like why don't you just get a whiteboard man and i was like nah i'm, I'm kind of ghetto like that so i <laughs> cut up some pizza boxes and wrote on it i like that kind of old grungy garage style look so i did that um originally this list was I didn't think I was going to get a sentimental value for the car so originally this whole list of stuff that needed to get done was going to be stuff that I feel was perfect for sale because I don't like to sell cheap stuff back to people or broken stuff so I like to make sure everything is you know what I feel would be a, a perfect good thing but then like I said I gained sentimental value so then I'd slowly been crossing off to where it's everything perfect for the car for me as a good perfect base and then we're going to start off into another list of not necessarily things that need to get done but like i want to get done <laughs> i want to get done and then you got the rb25 rebuild list keep that in check as it as you see in the channel will progress as i'll buy stuff you'll see more of the rb25 build videos and all that so yeah wall of motivation always keeps me up when i'm Feeling a little down, I come out here, maybe read some, check out some cool stuff. Okay, uh, we'll move on to the toolbox. Um, as you can see, I <laughs> caked this thing and a lot of awesome stickers that I've collected over the, my time. <laughs> and uh, a lot of them are rare stickers. Some of them are Stein's sign stickers, such as well, a couple of my favorite drivers, uh, Kazuya Taguchi, he signed that one. Um, of course, Masashi Okoye again, he signed that one. Um, some of my favorite channels I like to watch. Um, and some reputable companies, a lot of JDM um, stickers I got from people that went over there, picked them up, brought them back. Uh, I got a lot of friends going in out of Japan a lot, so I get, I get a pretty good hookup on some of the stuff but yeah i got pretty cool stickers some of my driver stickers another one of my favorite drivers um yeah a lot of 
rare stickers and stuff like that. So I, I usually put my rare stickers up on my my toolbox, but enough about those. Let's talk about the tools. Um, so yeah, I got over here, I got my little magnet plate and I got my, my cheap Harbor <laughs> freight lights that you get for free. You never can have too many lights, so I always, always got lights. Um, this right here is probably the most used drawer out of everything that I do. This is the metric drawer, so anything import cars is mainly metric. Um, I got, I got the wrenches, um, and these wrenches have the, the dog bones attachments to them, and, um, I don't really like this too much. I'm gonna get some regular, uh, wrenches as well, but they're cool to have, they work. Um, deep wells, definitely get a set of deep well sockets. Um, and then I got all the regular size, the small sockets. Um, you got all the step sizes if you wanna go bigger, you wanna go medium, small, you got all the steps. Um, swivel sockets, definitely help you out in sticky situation when stuff is kind of hard to get to so it's always good to have swivel sockets definitely pick up a set and of course I got one in all each sizes um extensions extensions mac daddy extensions little ones extensions are always good I use them all the time even when I don't really have to but I use them um I got a little 10 millimeter uh, battery wrench. I use this um, basically as just like a 10, but it also it's good, I guess, when you're taking off your battery so you don't get shocked. So, and then a lot of random giant miscellaneous sockets that I got, like for taking off pulleys and other stuff like that. So anything big. I did, I'm just trying to get all the metric sockets that I can of almost any size. So I got everything here. A majority of everything that I need on my car is on this area and then these are also a cool thing to invest in I definitely get this if you have a drill power stuff turns it into basically a ratchet and you can attach sockets to it and they come off pretty quick you can get these set over at Harbor Freight too so definitely an awesome investment same with attaching drill bits okay so the mixture drawer, that's what I mainly use. And in the next drawer, you see I got my ratchets and um, screwdriver extensions and stuff like that and different little bits for them. These I've actually had forever and snapped them. They're all, this is the only one I actually have that's currently working right now, so I need to buy those and upgrade these and throw these out, but generally, this is where my ratchets go, so that's the good drawer. Um, this one is basically my, I don't use drawer except for <laughs> my adjustable wrenches. These are all, um, uh, not metric. So, yeah, um, some of these do come in handy sometimes, but may most of the time, like I said, I just stick to metric because I work on import cars. I like those. So, these will definitely get replaced whenever I get a bunch more metric, uh, wrenches. But I got my adjustables in here and... You definitely need them from time to time, so the adjustable is good. Here's where all my pliers and um, cutting little drawer is, a lot of my pliers. So I got the small and the big um, vice grips, and they definitely come in handy. Uh, snap ring pliers and their attachments, definitely awesome. There's some snap rings that you got in the 240 so that definitely helps out like around the shifter and stuff like that especially since I do my servicing through the shifter and not a pump underneath um, I got my needle nose got my 45 degree needle nose and then I got my 90 degree needle nose definitely useful to have all different size and style need them um, diagonal cutters definitely Necessity, especially when you're always cutting zip ties, because hashtag 240 life. Um, channel locks, um, more. This is this random tool that <laughs> I got for Christmas a long time ago. I always kept. It's one of those crazy tools where they're always trying to make life easier, and uh, that's where this guy comes into play. Um, I don't use it as much, but I still like to have it. It was a gift, and it's awesome. So <laughs> it's kind of funny. 
Um, but yeah, it stays in there. Uh, and then here is all my screwdriver and flathead drawer. Um, I also got all my drill bits over here, my step down, uh, some wire strippers and stuff. There's some more non-metric sockets. Those will eventually, I just throw them in there and they're going to disappear. Put more drill bits on this side. So this is all my drill bits and screwdriver um, drawer. Definitely useful. I, I go to this one probably the second most time. Moving down, now we got the big daddy drawer, the Mac daddy drawer. <laughs> you got your torque wrench, you got your breaker bar. As you always hear me say, this is one of the most useful tools working on an old car. This and good old PB blaster will take anything off, so definitely invest in a, a breaker bar. You will need them. You will need them. <laughs> invest. Um, got an oil filter wrench, it's one of those other things that they just come with. I don't really use this. I like to use good old bare man strength and just so. Uh, and then you got your rubber mallet, which is good when you don't want to ding and scratch things up. And then if you just want to go balls to the wall and you don't care, you got your big daddy steel hammer. So and then um, take off lugs. I got this old thing, but I don't really need it. So yeah, torque wrench, breaker bar, hammers, and oil filter wrench if need be. And then finally, this drawer down here is all my miscellaneous drawer. So you got the Dremel, which is another very, very useful tool. I would definitely recommend investing in one of these. Dremels are awesome. Tape measure, measure twice, cut once. Masks, um, welding wire. Um, I got a multimeter. Um, spray gun for a spray can to so get a nice even spray. Um, solder, um, drill bits for the Dremel, like I said you can never have enough lights, got more lights, got flux, I got circular saws in here, um, I got a file when you're gonna file down some stuff, I got, um, and a, a ruler to measure. So it's pretty much the miscellaneous drawer and then finally down here in this drawer um this is all the big power tool stuff kind of drawer so you, you got your timing gun got your charger you got um your drills got light back there got a light here got ball joint separator i got tie rod separator so those are good to have definitely get in those um Soldering station, that one's pretty good. A uh, face shield, definitely get a face shield. Definitely, that's one of the good things, that and some safety glasses, always have safety. And some soldering irons, so. That pretty much wraps up my toolbox for right now. That's pretty much all I need. That's a basic setup, pretty basic setup. I usually uh, like to treat myself once a month, I'll buy myself some new tool keep building on it even if I don't need it I like to just buy myself a tool and yeah so it'll build on it and eventually you'll have as much as you need um, over here here's where I usually keep like a bunch of parts on the shelf <laughs> you'll see it's labeled arc 7 parts and GTI Passat parts uh, my buddy's really big into V dubs, that's his thing. I, I kind of got into them learning about them. They're pretty awesome. I actually like them too. I wouldn't mind a daily one, but yeah, so he used to stay with me, and that was back when I also was rocking the FC. So I used to keep my parts and his parts on here, and now it's just the RB and the KA uh, parts holder. So yeah, like right here, I got RB, RB, KA, KA, minus the, the RB exhaust manifold. But and here I got like the custom painted valve covers and stuff I don't want to get ruined. Um, I got the Up Garage uh, Gin brand um, lightweight flywheel new from Up Garage. I haven't used that yet. Um, RB25 ECU. Got the MAF. I got the the variable cam. Um, the synchronizer pulley. Uh, 
We got some 240 lights. Probably still gonna try to sell those. Here's all the, literally the nuts and bolts and everything for the RB, all neatly labeled, um, so I can put everything back together, nice and easy. So they're all there. The old part that's gonna get thrown out. It's just gonna be stacked with all the new parts as we get them. Uh, Skyline R33 gauge cluster. Got my old Nardi wheel box. A lot of cleaning stuff up here, dry rag, um, lint free, uh, microfiber cloth, stuff like that. Um, got the shop vac, got the vac, keep everything clean, the trash can. Over here is mainly a lot of cleaners, uh, sandpaper, oils, um, my scrounge, a lot of little miscellaneous things. Uh, I'll start with this. So yeah, you got all your car cleaning detailing stuff in here. Down here we got all our paints, PB, um, Bondo, uh, WD, Goo Off, like everything I need to, to basically clean and prep and fix car a little bit. Um, shop rags down here. More brake cleaner. Um, Right up here, you got the, the cleaning station for cleaning your hands and stuff. Uh, here's another little drawers I go to, mainly. Uh, here's my working gloves. The scrounge drawer is another big one. Literally, it's random from Skyline parts to 240 to <laughs> RX-7 FC to V-Dub to <laughs> just a lot of scrounge. So I always got scrounge when I need it bunch of little random tabs and pins um, fuses lights stuff like that in here here's an, probably the second biggest drawer I go to is the small and hand tools um, more lights uh, this card to lay down some decals I got sharpies I got little baby screwdrivers tape measures um, door panel card um, tools to remove that a little blowtorch um, safety glasses, basically a lot of little stuff I need. Dynamat roller, uh, razor blades, uh, spark plug gap tool. Um, so yeah, a lot of little tools. The miscellaneous, this is all like 3M tape, um, silicones, wires, uh, JB weld, uh, electric tape, Basically just a lot of tape and little little stuff. ARP, head stud fastener, uh, grease, stuff like that. More parts bag specific. These are all like more RB25 parts, valve cover, bolts, more everything for the RB25, literally all the scrounges there. And then here we got all our cool decals and stickers I don't use and stuff like that that I haven't gotten around to yet. Um, so yeah, that's all that. Um, over here, I got some more little tape, some JDM markers and <laughs> grease and other stuff like that. And this is a lot more of a tape box. It has a lot of different tapes. And then, of course, I got the speed tape, the duct tape, the masking tape, the regular tape. Got like every tape I need. So we're good. Um, heat shrink. Uh, ceiling washer assortment, uh, hose clamps, got literally every hose clamp I would need. Uh, special WD, uh, rubber coating, more stuff. Um, and then over here, we got all of our manuals that we are going to be using in this channel. Well, we're not going to be using the RX-7 one I don't got anymore, but we'll be using the RB one and the 240. So obviously you got the 241. Um, beginning with all the videos, I'll always go back. I'll point a reference in this book where you could find it. They're a little bit vague instructions, and then I'll go through and do how I'm going to do. Of course, you got the, the Hanes Mazda RX-7. I like collecting these things, too. And then I got the English translated version of the RB manual. It does all of them from RB20, 25, 26, RB20E, 25E, like all the different variations of it. Um, so yeah, we got the, the whole manual. This is what we'll be using 
mainly for torque specs and other stuff like that when we're assembling the RB. I've never assembled an RB. So, yeah, I will be using this, which is awesome. Should definitely help out a lot. It's not as vague as a lot of these Chilton manuals and stuff like that. So we got our manuals to go back to refer to. Um, down here, zip tie king, hashtag 240 life. You gotta have a lot of zip ties. We got all of them. Uh, wire brushes, sandpapers, um, gear oil, um, rubbing alcohol, um, coolant, and oil. So that's where all those go. Uh, we got a funnel, we got dustpan, engine light, um, more vacuum accessories, uh, cord extensions. Two is enough for this whole area and if I want to go outside, so we got those. Custom little oil drain catch <laughs> that I made because I have a slight little leak, so I usually just have that and diaper eats it up. So now we're done with this whole side. Over here now is the whole project side. That's getting tossed. These are getting tossed. There's the drive shaft. Uh, that's a R230 diff, viscous diff out of uh, Z I'm selling. Uh, there's the R200 diff that's viscous as well. And that one's out of the skyline. Got some five lugs back there. Here's my custom little paint booth. <laughs> it's where I... I usually get stuff done where I don't want overspray and stuff getting out, so I, I would normally take that, put it over here, and we're good to go. Um, custom mats <laughs> to lay on and catch stuff, so. And here's the other big part of the whole channel. Uh, we got the R33 Trans right here. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's the, the R33 Trans. It came out of a 95. Um, all this came out of the same car, 95. Uh, got it all cleaned up, ready to go almost. Just need to clean out in here and then get the throw out bearing, all the other stuff cleaned up. So, got the the trans ready to go. Um, got the RB25 DET block. Uh, I've already done some stuff. Got it nice and painted, uh, nice and cleaned. Um, the original motor only had 62,000 miles on it. My buddy pulled it from a running R33 when he was over there because the time you couldn't bring him and he wanted to throw it in his 280Z also. So he said he picked it up and then pulled it and all from a running car before he left Japan. Decided he was going back to Japan. Didn't want to lug it. Hooked me up because he knew I love RBs and I wanted this. So besides waiting on parts I've already painted and cleaned I, I clean everything up get everything going um, RB25 head over there um, still dirty needs to get clean uh, I'm gonna be getting to that soon you guys will probably see that part me taking it apart cleaning the oxidation with a wire brush um, probably gonna take it to a shop you know pay them to just um, resurface the bottom maybe clean it out um, it's not that expensive if you do it by the head. If you take a block, it's a lot more expensive than this massive thing. But yeah, so RB25 head. Can't wait to get that on this to start looking like an RB again. Um, big brake upgrade. That one's coming soon. Uh, got these nice, nice and painted and ready to go. Uh, not a bad job, I say so myself. Pretty clean. Got even all the hardware cleaned, uh, ready to go. I'm going to do a video of me on how to put all this back together, get it ready. So that's soon to come. It is big brake upgrade. We're all ready to go besides getting rotors, uh, new lines, and the Z brake master cylinder, which I might pick up soon. More to come on that. Um, stock seat. I always love these sock seats. Uh, I did a little test run with the driver's seat that's currently in there right now because I remember we're gonna switch this one out soon. And I wanted um, a stock seat basically so my passenger doesn't feel limited to uh, having a 34 less waist sitting in a bucket seat when they can sit in this. There's no rips, no tears, anything. It's like a really good seat. Got it for like 20 bucks. The only thing is, is it's a little stained. 
I've already steam cleaned it twice and uh, used stain remover. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use those cans there and like the driver's seat you'll see in a minute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dye it to the interior color and yeah, this should be amazing. So this is definitely gonna be the passenger seat. I'm gonna clean it up. It's probably gonna be one of the next videos if it's not for the door panels. Um, so definitely look out for that. And now onto the door panels. Uh, I got the bride granitation material coming in. Going with that, the whole interior. You don't really see much 240s with brown. Mine is brown, only has like one little crack on the dash. Just awesome, loving it. I love the way it looks with the brown and the gray bride granitation with the black. So I got the floor mats for that. I'm gonna wrap that. I picked these things up pretty good too. So that's gonna probably be one of the next videos is cleaning these up, getting them ready. It doesn't have like the whole cut where someone just stuffed a speaker, like kind of going with the whole resto style. So it, it's gonna look good. More RB parts, forgot to mention. More RB parts, <laughs> all of that stuff in there. Even there's intercooler piping. Uh, there was like an epexy blow off valve, all kinds of cool stuff. But um, yeah, and then uh, this cool little panel that I'm making. Um, I'm gonna make a little switch panel. I like like the old school little switches, so kind of sticking with a little bit of an old school theme. But yeah, just to operate like I don't know, like fog lights. Uh, I don't have high beams, so I was gonna put a little party lights in those. Um, interior, exterior lighting if I wanted it. Uh, fans. So yeah, um, that's gonna probably be coming up soon. Also, is cutting and making this fit. I want it to make kind of OEM-ish flush. So, we're going to get going on that soon. So, yeah, guys. Um, that's pretty much my whole um, garage. Everything that I have, everything that I use, you guys finally got a tour. Uh, this is going to be kind of a lengthy video because, uh, um, yeah, I don't really like talking. I don't like to make lengthy videos. I'm not much of a vlogger, but I figured you guys see a little bit of my setup on how you know, like anybody can just get out there and do it, man. Just you gotta have the passion, but. So yeah, now I figure it would be a good time to introduce the, the build of the channel. Obviously there's gonna be a couple more builds that I wanna do later on, but this is the the first one um, and give a little bit more about the, the build and everything like that, so. Um, without further ado, introduce the build of the channel. Here we go. Boom. We have a 1993 Nissan 240SX um, S13, Sil80 style. Um, I believe it was an SE model. So one of the last year of the hatches that were made in the United States. Um, I'll go over some of the things about it. Um, some of the stuff that I've done. Most of it you'll be able to find more in depth on um, Instagram. At Project Still Daily. Like I said, it'll always be in the description. Um, I'll try to go over everything that I can think of right now that I've done to the car since the entire year and some change that I've owned it. So <clears throat> let's start off with the awesome Sylvia front. Um, it's a dual projectors with the, the fog bricks. Um, it's usually considered to be rare usually the least rare of the Sylvia's are the triple projectors the bricks being the highest um, I specifically like the dual projector with the the fog bricks because I like that look where um, the fogs are always on and gives it like eyes kind of when you roll around um, it had the the crystal corners originally when I got the car um, but as you can see, they're not so crystal anymore. They're old because someone didn't seal them up and put them in right. So um, they have white LED bulbs in there. I have HID projectors in this one. There's nothing in the high beam. I'm going to eventually put some party lights in those. Um, original um, OEM Sylvia um, center grill. Um, wrapped in carbon fiber with the Sylvia emblem. I like the way that looks. Um, OEM Sylvia bumper. 
That's the metal one too. With the uh, OEM amber turn signals. Um, OEM metal fenders. Uh, they're a little bit messed up. Someone rolled rolled these and pulled these and they did it kind of horribly. I actually used body filler to kind of shape it back. It was all bacon from being pulled. And um, as you can tell, most of the body is, has been primed. Um, this hood used to be mangled right here. That's why it doesn't sit right. And as you can tell, like right here, it sits perfect like how it's supposed to. And then over there, it just pulls out. So the hood was repaired. I'm not worried about it. It's going to eventually get changed. I want the D-Max style vented hoods. And I also want the um, <clears throat> the D Max um, or even uh, Origin some nice I don't know thirty maybe with the vents on the side I don't know I'm thinking about it but these ones will do for now um, and the time that I've had it I've also made it super tight and um, nice and fitted and tucked not all mangled when I got it like everything was all. Cut up on brackets, I'll show you in a minute. The the headlights have are all mangled, so they got brackets. So I, I tightened them all in as best as I could. Um, the only thing is, is the the hood is the only thing that's bad about <laughs> um, the whole front end. I don't like the way the hood is because it's mangled. It does it just doesn't sit right, and there's gaps. Um, I got like nice perfect gaps over here, and same with on this side like they're perfect but yeah that's what you can do um, I always every S chassis I usually get I always have to have the the Sylvia front so it's always a necessity for me <laughs> um, got the five lug swap in the front four lugs are still in the back uh, two different style rims I like this uh, little open area style of a uh, little two spoke rim and then I like the hardcore mesh I actually want I want to keep these I'm gonna paint these um, different color probably like the really bright white when I paint the whole car with the matte black still need to sand and prime the door um, and then I want like the deep dish in the back with the white so I like those I just wish they were deeper but yeah, I got mostly all the body panels, all the dents out, nice and straight and clean. Um, I did leave a little imperfections in it, so when it gets painted, I'm not going to be worried about driving around. I still want to daily this thing. Um, has the sunroof. Um, yeah, pretty clean panels. Not too bad. Um, yeah, like I said, it's the SE model, I believe, so it has all the fancy gizmos and stuff like that and like cruise control and everything I've been slowly doing some uh, custom sil silady style badge from the original 500's main um, D-Max style taillights I like those I like them the most on the hatches most people wanted me to get the the Koki or Type X type but, I don't know, I'd rather, if I'm going to rock the circles, I'd rather be rocking a skyline. So, <laughs> I like the original hatch style look. Um, oh yeah, under here, still got stock exhaust. New fresh gas tank, I'm pretty sure you just saw that video. Um, I have some random coils on it. Um, these are 18s, those are 17s on a stagger set. Um, drilled and slotted rotors. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna s I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna shave this off the trunk and get it painted. I'm about to pick up a the Rocket Bunny style wing that I want and put that on the rear. Eventually, I'm gonna shave this when I get the Origin over fenders on it. Um, as for I have random. Like I said, I'm, I, I, you'd have to look more in depth, but um, I believe this one has one aftermarket, um, I believe for camber arm, 
And this one has like toe or something. You can kind of see it right there. Um, yeah, eventually I'm just going to buy a whole bunch of new arms and get everything dialed in for that. So, um, yeah, it's for that. Um, carbon wrapped uh, B pillars as well. I think it looks nice like that. Um, see, it's for the inside. These door panels are mangled, but like I already said earlier, I got new ones, so that's fine. Um, nice S13 stock seat. Um, dash is in amazing condition. Um, the interior is actually not too bad. I'm going to try to keep full interior. I don't know. Eventually I might, because this has a couple little stains on it here and there, but I might change the carpet out, but... Yeah, you got the Broadway mirror. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, it got all the fancy gizmos. Um, you got the bride floor mats. Um, all all interiors here. I'm gonna try to keep it like I said. Um, I got the S14 seat belts. Um, got rid of the sliders. Definitely like it a lot better without all that. Uh, let's see. Got the old school Nismo shift knob. This is going to be replaced with a new radio, radio and the um, flip panel. And then I got a new AC unit uh, sw switches. Uh, random fire extinguisher. I actually had where my starter almost started to catch on fire, so. <laughs> Now I keep one mounted in here in case of anything. Um, beautiful non-cracked dash. It has like one crack like way up here, but it's usually hard to to see. So really, really great dash, which is very rare in 240s. Usually, everywhere I go, people a lot of times will offer me money for my dash. It's kind of funny. Um, new OEM boot shift boot. I'm going to change that anyways. I just swapped it out because there was a flower bag <laughs> that was swapped. Um, you can see that again. And the old ones. Um, street Faction. Uh, air freshener. Uh, my brothers helped me wrap this one. These haven't yet. I'm going to actually pull these off and rewrap them. They're all shitty done. But yeah, uh my brothers wrapped this for me, so I like kind of the brown and the, the carbon look. And then I'm going to go for the bride granadation look. I'm going to get these seats back here wrapped in the material. These door panels wrapped in the material. The shift boot. And then I'll have the my bride seat and then the, the mats. And I'm probably going to get the cushions, the granadation cushions for that. Um, yeah, and then I got the... NRG quick release, the whole setup, the slim hub, the quick release hub. Um, it did have Bluetooth and all that other stuff in there. Um, literally everything works, but I've already disabled some stuff. I got um, my defoggers that still work, but the AC doesn't. But I can have the fan blow air if I want. Um, and then yeah, I got the the Nardi wheel. Um, Signed by a couple of my favorite drivers. Um, I still need to get two more, but I got uh, Kevin Lawrence, Nate Hamilton, Pure Arthur Vicek, um, James Dean, and Rob Parsons, aka the Chair Slayer. I just gotta get Yokoi san and Taguchi san right there, and I'll pretty much have all my favorite S chassis drivers. Um, yeah, and we'll look under the hood now. Um, like I said, there's not much going on. I did a lot of, I guess, stuff to keep it reliable running for right now uh, while we're building the the RB. So, uh, yeah, you got your basic KA24D set up. Um, I just did a couple of random stuff, like, and of course I got the coolant overflow tank upgrade, I got the Z32 fuel filter upgrade, 
Um, a new fan. I got the Quest alternator upgrade. That one was another good one. Uh, if I, a lot of people want to see, I can make a, a video uh, kind of um, to show like everything that, that to do required to get that in there because that's definitely a really good upgrade for these old things. Um, yeah, uh, S14 slave cylinder. Um, like I said, here's some of the the custom bracket works that I had to do because these are all broken up and mangled like a ruler and just to fit them tighter. Um, the HIDs were already installed before and um, they're with electrical tape eventually. I'm just going to take them and solder them after I get the fogs and everything. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's pretty basic. Um, some no-name coils I got on it. Um, I'm getting ready to want to change those out. I'm going to try to pick up some BC coils that I really want for the car. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, as for right now, um, like I said, keep watching. Um, you can go back and look at my old videos on how I did everything. Um, oh, like for instance, uh, got these corner lights running. Originally they were cut off my harness, so we soldered them up and got them in the harness. We also did the fender tuck upgrades up here. I don't know if I can, maybe you can't really see it, but yeah, they're all zip tied up there. So that's another good thing you gotta do to 240s. Um, yeah, everything is all updated. Just gonna keep this thing going for reliability for now, um, until the RB is ready. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what we're working with with the channel right now. Um, oh, I forgot to mention earlier when I was giving the tour, I got the awesome sheet that I made. Uh, basically everything off of the Sil80 style chassis, so uh, it's like my little cheat sheet I look up for. Um, and all the bulbs and everything I run for the KA24. And then everything I'm going to run for the RB, all the parts, so I can just come over here, look up whatever part numbers I need, and then go to the store to pick it up or order it if I have to. But really awesome cheat sheet I made. Um, literally every single bulb, wiper blades, um, everything I need to change out for regular maintenance. So that's cool. And then also, um, I was going to say another cool, <laughs> cool thing my friend gave me when he left back to Japan is all these uh, Option 2, G-Works, D-Sport, um, Modified Mag, all these old school tuner magazines and stuff like that that you know when I get bored out here um, and I'm running low on funds and I can't really work on this too much then I can read a lot of good material especially <laughs> when I can't read uh, the Japanese writing for the Option 2 and the G-Works but it's still cool to look. Those magazines are awesome because they they show um, in depth how they do it. It's not all about like girls and the girls and the cars and that's it. Like modeling, like they're they're actual mechanic DIY step by step instructions, like changing out your tie rods and other stuff like that. So forgot to show that earlier, but yeah. So that's pretty much the build. Um, Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope this wasn't too long. I just figured I'd make one video of an overview video since the rest are mainly just going to be like actual work videos and how to do things. Um, like I said, I probably forgot a bunch of stuff that um, that I forgot like the the rocker arms upgrade and all that other stuff I got. And, um, yeah, like I said, just go to the Instagram page and I believe I, I made... Um, let me see what is the app called. Uh, ch -ch -ch. yeah, wheel well. Um, I'm making one on there too, so it'll, I'll update all the information that's on it. But yeah, guys, um, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned on the channel. And we'll slowly see this thing get built into a beast and um, take y'all on the journey with me. So thank you, guys quick update so a, a deal came up that I couldn't pass up and it was for my drawer that I never 
use <laughs> drawer. So, um, yeah, now I have a whole metric set. Um, couldn't pass it up. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it was a deal I couldn't couldn't pass up. Um, I'll probably end up replacing them eventually with Craftsman. I like Craftsman um, wrenches, but for now, this will definitely work and be amazing. Um, literally got every metric wrench that I would need to work on the car, and then I got the dog bone backups on top, so yeah, um, I got that, and then also I saw early in the video you couldn't really see, and I also picked up another interesting tool that'll help us with the RB build mainly for that um you know, saw that you couldn't see all the all the different tools in here earlier but yeah I picked up the the cheap little impact gun to take the pulleys and stuff off the RB so we got a cheap little electric impact gun that should work good for right now um yeah there was the tie rod and ball joint separators there's the two drills uh, the timing gun, the charger, the lights, the soldering irons, and mask and soldering station and stuff. So, yeah, the, there's all the the big stuff. But yeah, I got picked me up uh, impact impact drill to help take the pulleys off the RB, and then oh wrong drawer, and then got the entire setup that we need for all the wrenches. So now this will be not the drawer that I never open or go to. This will probably be the drawer that I always go to now. So, yeah, just a quick update on that. I figured I'd update you at the end. So, like, now all that is good. So, my box is pretty much complete with everything metric that I need. And a lot of the big tools that we'll need for the build and uh, the RB build and stuff. So, yeah, guys, um, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this... There's a video you can use to kind of build a little bit on your setup and then slowly upgrade tools as you get money for that. But, um, yeah, I think um, I didn't even spend too much on my my box altogether with all my, my tools. Um, a lot of them I got on really good deals. But, so, yeah, um, um, this is maybe just a cool little layout of what to use in in your garage and how to build your box able to work on the car that you got so um <clears throat> yeah thanks for thanks for watching um and i'll catch y'all next time